five. And at the KOA weather station right now, 73 degrees. This has been the night report for Wednesday night, July 9th. This is Dick McDaniel saying good night for the night report news team. Stay tuned now for the CBS Radio Mystery Theater. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Quite recently, there were headlines about two shuttle planes that disappeared mysteriously in flight between Quito, Ecuador and Lima, Peru. The speculation was that they had been hijacked. Somehow, the story got buried and forgotten. At least, I never heard the outcome. What really happened to them, I don't know. Maybe for the same reason that Flight 638 out of El Paso, Texas, carrying 72 passengers, disappeared on a routine flight to Mexico City. A plane whose code name was Sierra Alpha 638. I can't just dump this crate in a cornfield, Reverend. Don't worry, Captain. You won't have any trouble landing. Look, I need 6,000 feet minimum and a secure runway to bring the aircraft in. Isn't that a coincidence? That's exactly what you'll have. Our mystery drama, Sierra Alpha 638, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Robert Dryden. I'll be back shortly with Act One. out of El Paso flies every weekday at 7.30, arriving Mexico City, 10 a.m. It's a businessman's flight, something akin to the Washington shuttle. The passengers have one thing in common. They are mostly men. Women and children are notable by their absence. It's an early flight, and morning coffee is the most urgent of human needs. Excuse me, stewardess. Yes, sir? I wanted some coffee... Oh, I'll get it for you right away, sir. Uh, just as soon as I've taken this tray into the pilots. I'll be right back. This is a gun in your back, stewardess. Just do as I say. All right, Captain. That's it. Oh. Don't change any frequencies. Don't touch the transponder. Kill that radio. Hey, who the heck are you, mister? You may call me by the correct title. I am the Reverend Joy. Nita, what kind of spoof is this? It's no gag, Mike. The man has a gun. Which is loaded, Captain. So just you and your co-pilot follow orders and we won't have any trouble. I take it this is a skyjack, Mr. Uh, where you are? I have told you. My name is the Reverend Joy. I am commandeering this plane. Why? This is the Lord's work. Uh... I don't read you, um... You don't have to for the moment. It will all be clear later. No, don't try it. Uh, uh, Jim, Jim, cool it. The man has a cannon. And the man is not alone. I have three companions riding herd on your passengers back there. Also with, uh, uh, cannons. So let's just follow orders and keep calm. Now come about to 260... And hold that course till I give you a new heading. Maintain altitude. You realize this is a shuttle flight. We're not fueled for long distance. You carry enough to get us where we're going. Yeah, it depends on where we're going. Trust me. Yeah. I don't seem to have any other option. But this uh, place we're going, am I going to be able to set this baby down? I need 6,000 feet minimum secure runway to bring this aircraft in. <laughs> Isn't that a coincidence? That's exactly what you'll have. El Paso Center. El Paso Center. This is Santa Rosa Center. I read you loud and clear. I'm supposed to have a DC-6 on the scope here. Sierra Alpha 
Alpha, six three eight. He doesn't show. Did you have a handoff from him to me? I was about to hand him off, but I lost him. Where did he file for? It's a routine scheduled flight every day. El Paso to Mexico City. That's what I thought. But I've lost track of him. What do we do now? I'm not taking any chances. He could be down somewhere. I'm notifying search and rescue. All right, Captain. You can take up a new heading. You can't get away with this, Reverend. Somebody is going to pick us up on a scope somewhere. Mm, I don't doubt it. So what? An unidentified speck. All they know is that it's a plane. But who we are, what we are, and where we're headed, as long as we maintain radio silence, is our secret. <coughs> oh, no! Uh, don't! Oh, Lord, no! You, you saw him! Crazy, stupid! Take it easy. Maybe now you realize this is not child's play. But we've got to do something for Jim. He, he's bleeding. You won't bleed long. He's dead. <gasps> Such a foolish thing for him to do. I told you I'm not alone. He can't be dead. He, he was he was just... Suppose you take up the heading I told you to. Yes, sir. Nita, how's Jim? I, I'm afraid he is... Yeah. I switched to automatic and I want to see for myself. You'll, uh... Have to move out of the cockpit, Mr. God. There isn't room for you in here. Then we'll make room. I'll make arrangements to get the body out of here. But the door stays open. I'll be right here by the galley. I warn you to keep away from the radio, or I'll shoot the girl. Ham? Yeah, Reverend. I'm coming. Nita, you went through emergency training school, right? You know about the ELT? Emergency Locator Transmitter, yes. Yeah, right. Now, get back in the tail somehow and pull the Velcro panel off. It's the last bulkhead. Now, there's a little yellow switch there outlined in red. Throw it up. That cuts the ELT in. As long as that is on, we're going to be found. I'll find a way, Mike. You trust me. Yeah, I do. But remember, it's... Oh, uh, hold it. There were three of us back there. Why didn't you call us? Because he very nearly had the revolver out of my hand. I was still in awe. You didn't have to total him. I am not accustomed to having my authority questioned. Okay, okay. Don't get your back up. Now, what are we going to do with him? Get him out of there. I want to sit at the controls till we land. We can't lug him back into the cabin. Passengers might panic. Uh, this... There's an, an emergency stretcher in the tail section. It's on rollers. I could bring it in here. Uh, we could cover him with a blanket. And... It's a good idea, Anita. Uh, you know where it is? The last bulkhead? Uh, on the right. That's my girl. Very well, Captain. Stewardess, go and get the stretcher. Uh, I'll give her a hand. She can manage for herself. Excuse me, please. Um. You get back there and organize those passengers. Figure how many of them we can use and which are deadwood. I want them out in the fields the moment we land. They're not going to get much coolie labor out of that bunch. I better. You can't keep this plane under wraps indefinitely. It's got to be ready to do the Lord's work when I call on it. But why don't we scrap the soft stuff and go with the hard, hmm? Huh? Less risk. And God said... Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed. That harvest is precious to me and my church. Oh, man, you can dish the words. But if you wasn't so nuts, I wouldn't be sitting on several million bucks. So oh, I ain't gonna argue. Um, are we gonna be able to land this thing at the farm? You leave that up to the captain and me. Bill. Sorry I'm late. Well, what's the scoop? I don't know much, Doug. El Paso Center reported a DC-6 dropped off their scan. 
The next center in Mexico, Santa Rosa, didn't pick him up. Oh, you think he's down? The airlines have been checking, but there's no sighting. They called in Civil Air Patrol. I'll brief you once we get up and moving. Let's scramble. Mister, you have to keep waving the artillery around. Those things go off. Yeah, like your buddy found out? Yeah. He didn't have to do that. Well, you'll find the reverence pretty quick on the trigger about a lot of things. Where do you fit in this picture? Me? <laughs> Strictly business with me. You're not a member of his cult or whatever it is? No, not me, Captain. I'm just hired muscle. To help skyjack the plane. Well, I can tell you it's one sweetheart of a deal. It sets me up in the big bucks for life. And the, uh, reverend? Oh, he's got it made already. This only makes him three times as rich. Uh, what are we, hostages? Uh, are we being held for ransom or what? Nah, nothing like that. Well, then what? All right, Ham. You can get back in your seat. We'll be landing soon. Okay, reverend. What did you do with Jim? The co-pilot. Put him back in the tail section. Are you... Are you sure he's dead? He has gone to his return and made his peace. Yeah. You made it for him. Nah. The regrettable accident. I know you're an automatic captain, but don't try to take me... You'd have a bullet in you before you were halfway out of your seat. You wouldn't be in very good shape in a plane without a pilot. There'd be a pilot. I'm one. Or I used to be. All right. It's time to start our landing approach. I'll just get belted into the co-pilot seat, Captain. Uh, what is your name, anyway? Mike. Mike Therese. Mexican? Yeah, second generation. Like Senorita Silvera, the attractive young stewardess who uh, brought us together. It may come in handy. Uh -huh. What does that mean? We might have some need of interpreters. A lot of Mexicans on the plane. But that can wait. First of all, let's land this thing. Get her off automatic and back on manual. I don't like this terrain. Where am I going to set her down? You'll see. You can start your landing approach, Captain Torres. Normal descent, 500 feet a minute, down to pattern altitude so you can land where I'm going to tell you to. Don't I need a clearance to come in? There'd be nobody to give it to you. You mean this is an unattended field? Uh, <laughs> yes. You've got to be out of your head, Mr. Reverend whatever your name is. This is a big plane. Look, I got 73 passengers back there to say nothing of crew and your own men. I, I can't land on some dinky, chaparral-strewn hunk of desert. I promised you 6,000 feet of runway, and you'll get it. Well, even that's short. What kind of surface is it? Steel landing mats, war surplus. Good surface. Now look to your left at 9 o'clock as we clear this mountain face. There. You can see it now. In the valley. Uh, there's not much width. There's enough. Use full flaps. Aim for the threshold and bring her in short. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of braking power. How come you gave up flying? I didn't. It gave me up. Ah, you were grounded, huh? Why? Mm, difference of opinion between myself and the FAA. They objected to my use of the Lord's food for the mind which brings the peace of heaven, freeing the soul from the body which keeps it earthbound. You fly on marijuana? <laughs> Should have tabbed it from the smell. Start your landing pattern. We're going in. Okay. One last chance, Reverend. What? You're risking a lot of lives on this landing. And whatever it is you're up to, you're not going to get away with it. Why not? You know as well as I do that this plane has simply disappeared. In this wild terrain, it will never be found. Don't kid yourself. It'll be found. If you're counting on your ELT, Captain Torres, forget it. 
I checked that when I went back with your ex-co-pilot. Your pretty little stewardess had turned it on, but I turned it off. And it will stay that way until I am through with this aircraft. Now, let's see what a hot pilot you are. You put this baby down and don't try any tricks or... Or I'll put you down and bring her in myself. Somewhere in the heart of the Sierra Madre Occidental Range in northwest Mexico, a plane drops in between forbidding escarpments to a chancy and marginal landing. The lives of some 80 people depend upon the skill of the pilot and the whim of a fanatic cult leader. His morals and judgment clouded by the influence of drugs. But what brings them all together on this dangerous venture? I shall return shortly with Act Two. A plane's lifeline is braided from the twin strands of radar and radio. When a flight takes off, it is monitored on a series of control centers, passing from one scope to the other, and in voice contact all the way. Occasionally, the radar scopes do not overlap, and for several minutes, a flight can be in no man's land if radio contact is not maintained. That's what happened to Sierra Alpha 638 when the skyjackers closed down the radio and diverted it into an area not covered by scopes. Now, two hours after the plane disappeared, all ground stations are alerted and a massive search is underway. This is Air Rescue SA-16, Whiskey X-Ray. We have our radars on and emergency transmitters and receivers, but we come up zero. Would you advise future action? This is Harvey Combs, El Paso Center. I've been named coordinator for the search and rescue commander. What area have you swept? We cover the area between the sign-off from El Paso's scope to the pickup on Santa Rosa. No show. What about the west sector? Want us to cover that? Let's see. CAP has two more planes going out to east sector. Yeah. West is a spot for you. We're sure he hit the deck? We have to presume he's down. It's almost two hours since he flipped out. He should have checked in somewhere before this. Our radar doesn't show any sign of him. Keep up the sweep. Run a grid search through that western sector until I can dig you up some more help. Can do. We'll be in touch. What's your figure, Doug? That doesn't add up. If he was in trouble, why didn't he holler? Maybe he never had a chance. Well, he could flip a switch and squawk. Well, he did. And if he bought it, uh, where's his ELT? Damaged in the crash, possibly. Well, ours is not the reason why. Where the devil you suppose he is? May I be the first to congratulate you, Captain Torres? An excellent landing. How would you know, Reverend? You're still six feet off the ground. I wouldn't advise you to get your hackles up, Captain. You're not dealing from strength. Don't be too sure about that. You made me land the plane, obviously, to pick up something, which means she's got to get back up in the air. Now, don't tell me you could get her up again, which leaves it to me. How's that for trumping your ace? Let me remind you quietly, Captain. There are 73 passengers on this plane, plus your pretty little countrywoman who is a stewardess. By virtue of might of being armed, I have the power of life and death over everyone. Would you care to be responsible for anything happening to them? You wouldn't harm them. Remember your co-pilot. You know, you're not even human. Quite right. I am supernatural. And I will have my way no matter what the cost. Now, let's get this operation started. What is this operation? Yeah. 
What's he planning to do with us, Mike? I don't know, Anita. What is this place? Mm, some kind of broken down old barn. Hey, I- I'm sorry about the emergency locator. Uh, don't blame yourself. You did just fine. Uh, how did the Reverend find out? He just seemed to know. When we brought... When we wheeled the stretcher back to the tail, he went straight for the bulkhead and turned the switch off. Mm, which leaves us square behind the eight ball. With these mountains all around and the plane camouflaged under the trees, we could never be spotted without the ELT. What are we going to do, Mike? Uh, figure a way out. First of all, we've got to figure out just what the Sam Hill we've gotten ourselves into. <laughs> Negative, no sighting, nothing on radar scans, no radio contacts as he bought out of the El Paso sector. They well, can't have just vanished in the thin air. Unless he blew up. My hunch says no. We got iron core mountains, tin roofs, and the biggest ground clutter ever rattled your ears. Somewhere in all that clutter might have been that plane. I want to buzz low level and see if she can't be eyeballed. Okay by me, but that's, that's pretty desolate terrain down there. Way off the flight plan. Now, why'd you think he might be down there? No, well, just a wild hunch. If I ever got a notion to hijack a plane, this country is about where I might just decide I could get away with hiding it. Hi, muscle man. The name is Ham. No, the man wants to see you, Captain. What about? He'll tell you. Okay. Let's go. Mike? Ah, you heard him, Anita. No sweat. Just try to keep the passengers quiet. Let them know I hope to have something concrete to tell them by the time I get back. Sure. Hey, uh, good luck. And it wouldn't hurt to have some for a change. Let's go, muscle man. I said the name is Ham. You want to be stuck with a name like that? Okay, let's go. Ham. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't be alarmed. I'll uh, try to tell you as much as I know. Where are we going? Oh, not far. The house right there. Am I finally going to find out just what this caper is all about? Once you've talked with the head crazy. Is that why he sent for me? I don't know. Maybe he just wants to convert you. Reverend, I got your fly, boy. Send him in. Ah, Captain Mike Torres, my hotshot pilot. I need some more of your cooperation. Reverend, just what do you intend to do with my crew and the passengers? I'll answer that after another question. How much reserve fuel do you have in the tanks? Where am I flying it to? Answer my question first. How much gas do we have? Or would you rather fall short and crash? We carry a load for a minimum of eight hours on this flight. Now, we are airborne for approximately three and a quarter hours. You take it from there. Just as I figured, we have no fuel problems, particularly since our load will be much less on the return flight. What does that mean? We won't have any passengers. We'll have no need of them. What are you going to do with them? Now, what is this all about? It's time you should know. I take it you're not familiar with my church. Your church? Yes, the Temple of the Angelical Revelation. I never heard of it. The more's the pity, Captain. It might have brought you the peace that passeth all understanding. I'm still waiting to hear why you skyjacked my plane. Right where we are was the farm of Miguel Valdez. For many years he kept me and my flock supplied with the Lord's herb without whose benign effect my congregation could never have found true communion. You mean he was your connection? He sold you marijuana? The hills here were alive with its promise till it was harvested a few weeks ago. But the sudden death of Miguel brought everything to a halt. With no money to pay them, all the muchachos disappeared. I came here with the money to find that the crop had not been processed. And the bales of our precious soul food were beginning to rot in the fields. 
Something drastic had to be done. So you skyjacked my plane with 73 passengers on board and risked their lives to have me land in this godforsaken spot just to pick up a load of marijuana? It is the communion of our church. Pot? Do not mock me, unbeliever. The word of the Lord is not to be denied. The what? It is there in black and white in the book itself. Genesis 1, verse... Uh, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb bearing seed, so saith the Lord. I don't think he meant the same kind of grass. That's the difference between us. I accept the word and live by it. Boy, you are either the biggest con man I've ever met up with, or you are out of your mind. I mean, all this for a few bales of pot? It was a large harvest, which must not be left to rot in the fields. I need your plane to transport it to the United States. You risked the lives of all the people aboard it for that? I needed them to collect the heavenly gift of the earth and bring it to the plane. Where is this stuff? At the far end of the valley. I want you to tell your passengers they must collect it. And load it? Why don't you tell them yourself? I think it would be easier for you to persuade them to cooperate. Particularly since most of them understand Spanish better than English. I suppose I do. What happens next? Then I have no further use for them. You'll let them go? They will be free. Uh, what about me? Uh, it would be a little different for you. I'm not checked out on that plane, and I wouldn't risk bringing her in safely. I need you to fly it. And after I get you home free... Both you and the plane will be dispensable. Supposing I tell you to just bug off. Then I'd have to persuade you to change your mind. One by one, Captain, starting with your little stewardess. You are mad. Not yet, Captain Torres. But don't try my patience. You know what that crazy man just told me? Sure. About the Mary Jane and getting the passengers to load it. That guy is a raving maniac. Now, how can you go along with this? I told you, buddy, my rake off on this little caper is going to put me on easy street. A plain load of marijuana? By the time it's dried or cured or whatever you do with it, what, what could it be worth? Plenty. Oh, but that's just the icing on the cake. What do you mean? Oh, didn't he tell you about the horse? Heroin? You got it. Eight kilos of the white stuff. The reverend sewed up through his connections with the mother church, or whatever you want to call it, somewhere in South America. They're using this farm as a drop. Ah, but the Mexican police are closing in on him. He knew he had to get out fast. So he hollered to my syndicate for the muscle to help him cut out. Still doesn't make sense. You know what this lunatic's going to have to do to cover up all this? What are you talking about? Uh, counting me, the passengers, the crew, you goons. He's got over 80 witnesses who could put him in jail for the rest of his life. To say nothing of facing a murder charge because of my co-pilot. Now, how is he going to keep their mouths shut? Yeah, that's not my problem. Isn't it? You might get away with a little grand larceny and skyjacking, but you get the blood of 80-plus people on your hands, Ham... You are never going to draw another easy breath as long as you hope to live. The ugly specter of anarchy stalks the world again today. The skyjackers, the terrorists, the unreasoning mobs, the religious fanatics, the cynics who clothe their aims under the guise of religion or a patriotic cause. How can they be stopped from getting away with murder? I shall return shortly with Act Three. KOA Radio 85 reminds you to enter the Diet Pepsi sweepstakes. You may win a 1980 Chevy Citation Pace Car or one of the special runner's digital wristwatches or Diet Pepsi. It's easy to enter the sweepstakes contest. Entry blanks most places Pepsi is sold. Contest ends August 12th. All entries must be received by then. Rules are printed on each entry blank. No purchase necessary. Enter the Diet Pepsi sweepstakes.
Captain Mike Torres' last statement to Ham Wesson, the hired gunman, has brought both of them to a halt. It is hard to read in Ham's flat killer's eyes what is in his thoughts, but at least for the moment, Mike has his undivided attention. There is a long pause as they regard each other, and in the strange silence, the evening sounds seem almost deafening. The Reverend told you he was going to total all them people? No, Ham, that's not what he told me. He told me he was going to set them free. But what he meant was uh, something quite different. Uh, Captain, what do you expect me to do about it? Unless I get a guarantee that those people are going to be safe. Every single one of them. That plane is grounded. I won't take you up and you can all rot with the marijuana and the heroin and your big caper goes straight down the drain. Look, don't throw your weight around, Captain. If you won't fly the plane, the Reverend can. Ham, you listen to me and you listen good. Now, taking off from here, no matter what the load, is going to be tricky. We're surrounded by mountains. There are thermal effects and turbulence that'll test even the best pilot to say nothing of knowing your plane inside and out to climb over the ridges. Now, even supposing you get over those hazards, where do we land in the U.S.? If that's where we're going. Oh, no sweat there. Yeah? What kind of field? Well, uh, it isn't a field exactly. It's hard, dry-packed earth. Hey, it's an old lake bed. Any mountains around? Well, yeah, I reckon. And how's the weather? Weather? Yeah. Since we can't use the radio, how do we check it? What's the ceiling, the wind velocity? Where are the winds at ground level? What's the visibility? How do you set her down in one piece? Ham, you want to put your life in his hands? Uh, you're getting through to me. Maybe me and the guru better straighten out a few things. Come on. I got to get you back with the rest of the civilians. The uh, passengers are getting pretty restless. You're going to have to tell them something. So what happened, Mike? Nita, honey, we are dealing with a madman. He's the head of one of those uh, cultist groups that pretend it's a religion. Now, his particular gimmick is that everyone sits around and gets stoned on marijuana. Because uh, he says it's their special communion and the, the Bible sanctifies it. Bible? Yeah, yeah, there's some verse in Genesis about the earth bringing forth grass and the herb bearing seed or something. I forget that. The, the deal is, he's got a field filled with drugs and he wants us all to load on the plane and then smuggle it back to the States. I mean, he risked all these people's lives for that? I told you, he's out of his skull. Yeah, the sooner we get away from him, the better. Why don't we just do what he wants? Well, because once we do, he hasn't any more use for us. Well, he needs you to fly the plane. Uh, that's something I hope his head gunsel can persuade him about. Because if he doesn't, I'll be just as expendable as the rest. We leave them behind with a poisoned water supply. Oh, they will go to meet their redeemer quickly and painlessly. But they must be disposed of. Reverend, you so much as harm one hair on just one of them passengers' heads. And your pilot ain't taking that plane up in the air. He doesn't have to know. It will happen after we leave them behind. Captain Torres ain't taken off without all of them on board. Oh, huh? how do you know? Because he just told me so. Then he'll be left behind, too, and I'll fly the plane. No way. What do you mean? I ain't risking my neck with you at the controls. You'll do as you're told. Look, I don't have to take orders from you. I've had enough of your wacky notions. I'm taking over this operation, and from now on, what I say goes. You dare defy me, the chosen? Behind me is all the might of my living church, and no one can stand against it. Put the gun down, Reverend. It's like the flying business. It's nothing to be handled by amateurs. I will not be defied. I will rise in my righteous wrath and smite... Oh. Oh. No. Why? Why hast thou forsaken her? 
told you, amateurs shouldn't fool around. And all that marijuana didn't help your aim, neither. You wanted to see me ham your buddies? Uh... Hey, what happened to the reverend? We don't have to worry about the nut anymore. I've taken over. What does that mean? I'll make you a deal, Captain. We'll forget the marijuana. It's peanuts anyway compared to the other. You can load the plane with your passengers instead and we'll all fly one cozy family to where we're going. And after we get there? By me, I couldn't care less once I get my cut. But there are some hard boys where we're going... And a couple I got with me. I can't answer for them. I'll offer you another deal. Yeah? We leave everyone behind except me, your two buddies, and you. And I'll fly you wherever you say. Tonight? No, not tonight. When? Right after sunup, if the visibility's good. Okay. You got yourself a deal. Go tell your group to, to get some shut-eye. You'll all be locked in for the night. Before we take off in the morning, I'll cut all of them loose except you, buddy. And one other. Who? That cute little stewardess. We'll take her along. Just a little insurance so we all get where we're going safely. And get one of my boys to take you back with the good news. Sweet dreams, Captain. See you first thing in the morning. Your hunch backfired, Captain. Yeah. Doug, if he crashed around here, sure didn't trigger his emergency locator. We'd have picked that up even through all the interference. Should have. Even if his ELT failed, why can't we pick up a bounce off the plane? Maybe we don't get any signal from the plane because it ain't around here. It has to be. How come? The way that DC-6 just dropped off the scopes. For the couple of minutes he was between their ranges, he must have banked sharp to like a 90-degree head. Could be, but he also could have banked left. Well, I don't see it. That's right across the tangle of plane routes. Some plane or other should have spotted him by now if he went east. But if he came west, this is a light traffic area. I got plenty of fuel in the tank, so I think I'll run the grid again. I might just turn up something. Uh, how are the passengers? Uh, they'll be all right. I told them to keep out of sight till we get off. Don't want anyone getting hurt now. Oh, I'm glad you got to the plane. Our friends are getting antsy. Yeah? Uh, where are they? One's in the toilet. The other's up talking to the boss who would in the cockpit. Oh, what a break. Look, I am going to try to sneak back and hit that ELT. Hey, go uh, on, uh, Captain. What do you say we get this bird in the air? Darn it. Uh, I'll be right there. Uh, I have to give Nita a hand with the uh, boarding ladder and help her close the door. Now, don't you worry, Mike. I'll switch it on somehow, somewhere along the way. Uh, I knew I shouldn't have allowed them to force you to come along. Ah, uh, you couldn't have stopped me. And look how handy I might turn out to be. Come on, come on. Shake the lead out. Yeah, on my way. Okay, Louis. You go let George out and strap yourselves in. As uh, soon as I've run my instrument check, we'll be taken off. You uh, better get your seatbelt on, Ham. Yeah, I will. Right beside you, Captain, in the co-pilot seat. With this. Just reach for that radio once and... And what? You shoot me? Who flies the plane? Oh, I don't shoot you, Captain. We just start roughing up our little hostage. Louie's gonna be sitting beside the girlfriend all the way. So help me if you touch Why her... Why would we have to as long as you're a good boy, Captain? Now let's get moving. I guess 
guess I should have gone down closer to the deck in case we could well, find... Uh, hold it, Bill. Listen. Geronimo. We hit pay dirt. Get a bearing on it. I'm looking at the ADF on him right now. Roger. Let me see if I can raise him on the emergency channel. This Coast Guard search and rescue calling Sierra Alpha 638. Do you read? Do you read? You got a fix on him, Doug? That's something screwy. Listen to this. He's at 225, no, 226, 227. That sucker's moving. He's in the air. And what's he doing with his ELP on you? Uh, uh, you can't raise him on the radio? No. And I can guess why. The only reason to have his ELT on while he's airborne means he's in trouble. And I can guess what it is. That baby's been skyjacked. Don't you lose him now, Doug. I'm going to call in the Marines. This is Whiskey X-ray to El Paso Center Search Coordinator. Do you read? Come in, El Paso Search Coordinator. We have found your lost plane. Hello, this is El Paso Center to Whiskey X-ray. You still got the DC-6 on the ELT? I got better than that. I have him in sight. Has he spotted you? No chance. I'm above and behind him at 6 o'clock. It's a blind spot. No chance he can tab me from the cockpit. Any change of course? No. He's still on the same heading. Okay, buddy. Stay with him and don't lose him. I can't send you the Marines, but I've vectored an AAF squadron to intercept. Hey, what the devil? Oh, you, uh... Just notice them, Ham? We got us some company. What are they? Air Force F-16s. Wing cannon, multiple machine guns. Two planes your side, two on mine. Well, who, what are they doing there? What do they want? You better let me get on emergency frequency before they blow us out of the air. No, no, don't touch it. They won't risk firing on us as long as they don't know there are no passengers aboard. Let me think. Oh, what do you want? I just brought some hot coffee for you and Mike. Oh, yeah. oh look out! Oh, he's burned my wrist, Joe. I'll do more than that if you so much as move an eyelash. Great, Nita. Now, give me, give me the gun. Now, close the door and bolt it before his goons can jump us. I've got it. Great, great, great. You switch the ELP on? I promised <laughs> I would. Now, yes. take the gun back while I bring the rescue crew in on emergency. Yes. This is Sierra Alpha 638. Do you read? We read. Who are you? Coast Guard, SA-16. You've been leading us one merry chase. What are you, hijacked? We were. Everything under control now. Me and one honey of a stewardess are locked in the control room with one of the hijackers. Nina has a gun on him. What about your passengers? None aboard. We left them in Mexico. As soon as we hit the deck and you boys take care of the two gunsels in the cabin, I'm gassing up and heading back for them. We'll take care of your hard boy as soon as we land. We're heading to the nearest military base. Stand by for course and heading. Ham and his brother gunman are in federal prison for what will amount to the rest of their lives. The heroin is destroyed, the marijuana burned, and Sierra Alpha back on its regular flight path. Mike and Anita not only date regularly, but have set the date. So, as the sweet bard of Avon said, all's well that ends well. I'll be back shortly. reaches of the stratosphere, the big birds fly, their contrails trailing behind them in a great white plume. The chance of being skyjacked? So small, it is less than a decimal point, as is the accident record. The safest method of transport comfort and without fear. Our cast included Robert Dryden and Russell Horton, Diana Kirkwood, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time...
pleasant dream? This is the voice of...